Hi everyone and welcome to our demo, How to Win More Deals with Smarter Automation. Let's tackle a few housekeeping items and then we'll dive right in. First off, we're going to record this webinar, so don't take notes. We'll email you the recording right after. Also, the audio is in listen-only mode, so it should only be coming in through the speakers. If you have any questions, hit the chat function in your webinar window. Happy to take your questions throughout and also at the end. Let's meet our speakers for today. This is Alex Ortiz. I come with 15 years experience in SaaS companies like Salesforce and a few others. And to paraphrase an old saying, I'm not just a VP, I'm also a client. I use Trey here internally uh, in our marketing and sales operations to automate many of our processes. And we'll highlight that when we get into the demo. I'm joined today by Andrew Wiseman, who's our product expert and heads of customer success engineering here at Trey. He's worked with many of our customers and got them on the path to success in becoming automated organizations. So let's go over the topics for today. And what we want to cover with you is a few things. First, we want to set the stage on why automation is such a powerful advantage for sales professionals and show how it's growing revenue at double the rate for companies that automate versus those that don't. Uh, we'll go into how sales and marketing professionals can use new technology to directly build their own smarter, faster revenue dri driving automation all by themselves. And then we'll pass things off to Andrew for a live demo. We've got four exciting use cases that I think a lot of sales organizations would love to use. And then after that, we're going to point out a few more resources where you can go to learn more about what people are doing in the trade community to automate their operations. And we'll take any questions at the end in a live Q&A. Hopefully that sounds good. Let's get started. So first I want to talk to you about the benefits of automating. This comes courtesy of a research group called Aberdeen. And if you look on the left in the orange box, what you'll see is a chart that says total company revenue. So what Aberdeen measured was best-in-class organizations versus all others, and they called the best-in-class organizations effective sales streamliners. That's the bar in green. And what they measured was what's the difference between best-in-class and non? What are they doing differently? And what they discovered was astounding, and that was the results that the best-in-class group were receiving. And what they see is they're growing company revenue at twice the rate as those that aren't streamlining the workflow. So there's really some big benefits here to automation. Uh, you, and you could look at you know, some of the other charts here about alignment and average deal size and profit margin. Basically, what Aberdeen is showing is that there's really tangible revenue results to automating processes, not just across sales, but across an organization. So really powerful stuff. So who's actually automating? Well, the reality is companies that are enterprises, Fortune 500s, startup companies, fast-growing companies, media companies. Actually, we see companies of all stripes and sizes automating their price processes with Trey. So there's probably some, some logos you recognize here. And, and the reality is um, there's a lot of different ways to automate your processes. And ultimately, a lot of these companies are looking for a very flexible solution to do so. They've got a lot of different use cases. And that will bring us to some of the examples that we see in our customer base on how people are using Trey to automate every step of the sales organization and processes within. So here's just a quick highlight. There's more than what we could fit on this slide. But if your organization, for example, is following an account-based outbound process, our first, our first use case, which you'll see in just a few moments, is really how to do this very effectively and how do you uh, really target account-based leads that are already warm. A lot of the times when you're doing account-based marketing and sales, you want to be alerted when 
one of your target accounts is on your website. You want to be able to engage with them when they're ready to talk, and there's lots of ways to automate the process of doing that. Uh, if you're thinking about SDR efficiency processes, there's ways to really drive efficiency by connecting SDR outreach tools to your CRM and really customizing some of that content by, by again, connecting all the different tools that your sales organization uses so you're not really moving data yourself. It appears where you are already used to working. We see people uh, like Forbes using Trey to improve their RFP win rate uh, by adding better visibility and lead time for those that need to contribute to the filling out of those dreaded RFPs. And what that ultimately means is a higher win rate for Forbes. Uh, in the nurture programs, which are usually jointly worked on between sales and, and marketing, we see people like uh, one of our customers, Outreach, that has developed something like Amazon's one-click ordering, but one-click gift sending that the sales reps can, can hit themselves, really empowering them. Over on the sales ops side, we see a lot of folks using Trey for lead to account man matching, lead to opportunity matching. This is also important for account-based processes. And of course, bi-directional sync. So whether you use multiple, if you're a big enterprise, you might have multiple CRM instances that you need synced. You might want to integrate your CRM to other tools up and down the funnel, whether it's to marketing tools, up funnel, or support tools, down funnel. Uh, but bi-directional sync really streamlines a lot of work. Uh, even on the negotiation front, we're seeing people use Slack uh, to approve discount, uh, discount rates and discount, uh, pricing discounts uh, for deals. And after you close a deal, of course, you want that customer to be happy and referenceable, and that's where we see organizations integrating to their post-sales processes, whether it's through integrating to Asana and the project management tools, and even detecting those happy, referenceable customers that can help you win new customers. So again, these are just a few examples. We want to whet your appetite on what's possible with an automation platform. And there's a lot more uh, that could be done as well. So next we want to pop in to the next phase of our webinar. We're going to talk, I'm going to do a little bit of setup here and then pass the baton to my partner in crime, Andrew, to show you what this looks like within Trey. So the first of the four use cases is this one. I'm very, I'm personally very excited about this. Uh, I've had a chance to work with some really great sales leaders on setting up inbound and outbound processes. And this one is for those organizations that are really looking for account-based marketing and have a targeted list of accounts that they're going after. So, you know, everyone knows that, you know, a lot of people come to your website, maybe 90% of visitors don't actually fill out a form if you're a B2B company, but there's an important new sets of technology out there that every sales organization can use, and it's called IP address matching, right? So if they come to the website, you can look up, hey, what IP did they come from? Oh, what? company corresponds to that IP, is that company on your target list of accounts? Chances are they, there's a subset that are. So that means they're coming to your website. You don't know about it. You don't know that, say, I don't know, Wells Fargo or at t was on your account, on your website. But with IP address lookup, you can now know that. It can now be presented within your CRM, within your uh, marketing automation tool. And now there's also tools out there that do data enrichment. Uh, we happen to use Clearbit. There's a lot of other vendors that do data enrichment. And so if you have an account like Wells Fargo, they're going to help you find all the contact info you can around people at that account, which means you now have a prospect list. And then finally, you have to ask yourself, would you rather cold call or cold email, or would you rather call on warm target accounts? And we now have technology like STR uh, outreach automation to do so and do it really effectively. And so what I'm saying here is there's a really cool workflow that we're using here internally and a few others um, to, to really target those 
accounts that are in our key account list that are already familiar with Trey. They may have not filled out a form, but they've come onto our website. And so we want to be able to proactively ping them and engage them further as part of our outbound processes. So this is a really exciting one. I want to pass it over to Mr. Andrew Wiseman to show you what this looks like in Trey. Cool. Thanks, Alex. Uh, let me just share my screen here. So essentially how this workflow works is um, Segment is a connected source to your homepage, and every time a new user views your homepage, um, Segment automatically connect, collects their IP address. Um, that is sent to this workflow in real time as, as a Segment destination, and as soon as we catch that new IP address, um, we process the data instantly. Um, so one, one cool thing about this flow is if you have hundreds of users viewing your page, um, there'll be no slowdown of the flow. Uh, we can process as many users as you need concurrently, um, so you'll never have to worry that this flow would slow down, slow down for larger data payloads. So what happens within the flow is the segment trigger comes in. Uh, we essentially just set up Trey as a destination in our segment account. We determine if the view is a homepage view because we're specifically interested in people who are just viewing their homepage and that's, as that's you know, a new visitor to the site. <clears throat> Um, we make a, a small check to data storage. Um, for this specific example, we only want to record each person one time. This is the first step that we use for deduplicating data. So every IP address is only processed one time. This both helps keep down your clear to reveal calls and ensure that any um, processing of these new users isn't done too many times. So we determine and say, hey, is this a new user to our site? So if the IP address has not been seen before, um, then we mark it as seen. We do a quick call to the Clearbit Reveal API. So this is our Clearbit connector. Um, this is just a visual representation of the entire Clearbit API. So all we have to do is pass an IP address to Reveal. You can select from any of the Clearbit APIs in this drop-down menu. But for the example, we've chosen Reveal. And as you can see here, Reveal returns this entire set of data from a simple API call using an IP address we can get domain, employee information, and whatnot, and use any of these data attributes later in our workflow. So the data attribute we've chosen to use is the employee count. So we've decided to say, hey, um, is this is the company that we just discovered from this IP address call, do they have greater than 250 employees? So to make it 250, I simply just type in 250 to this box. <clears throat> so was the result of this clearbit call? greater than 250. If yes, then we go ahead and run the rest of the logic. If no, it's not. We've decided that we don't want to run the remaining logic and add it as a contact or a HubSpot. So if it has more than 250, we find the company in our HubSpot that the Clearbit reveal returned. Um, if the company is not found as already existing, we go ahead and create a company just so that we can reference them later. Then we do a, a clear bit prospecting call using another one of the APIs. So Prospector essentially takes in a domain um, and it takes in the domain that we found in the reveal call and we can look up contacts in specific departments. And it's easy enough to just select whatever department you're interested in here. We've selected marketing for the demo. You can also do things like select seniority and title. Um, and then you get this entire payload of data back. So we pull back everyone from the marketing department of this company that we just you know, essentially discovered from only an IP address. We loop through each member of the marketing department and we add them to HubSpot as a contact under the company that we've just created. And it's very easy from here to swap out these HubSpot connectors for your CRM of choice. So if you're using you know, Salesforce or uh, Dynamics or NetSuite, very easy to just swap these out, and maybe you want them in your CRM as well as some type of marketing software. Um, you could easily map this into Marketo. Uh, you could easily move these into some type of outreach campaign based on the company size. So it's a really kind of good foundation to get creative off of. And if you'll notice, this workflow is only about 15 steps. Um, probably would take someone familiar with Trey under an hour to configure, and a new user maybe two hours, um, which is extremely fast and easy for this type of logic. 
Great. All right, Andrew, so let me just sum up what we just saw. We're sensing who's coming to the website, using some tools to um, basically either determine whether they're new or not, and creating new accounts or enriching the accounts we have. And this is helping us to really just pinpoint and target people that are already open to, uh, to our company. So outbound, again, gets a lot better with a workflow like this. Um, cool. Okay, so let's go on to our second use case. And again, I'll tee it up for Andrew and introduce you to uh, Chartio. It's a great uh, cloud-based BI and analytics tool. Really has a lot of momentum in the market. And Tom Melbourne's the VP of sales there. And man, I have had this problem at every company I've been working at, and that was you know, we love this sales chat tools, whether it's Intercom or Drift or, um, or Olark. Really great way to in engage people that are on your website. But the problem is, once you engage them, how do you get that information into Salesforce? Those are two disconnected tools. And wouldn't you rather know in your Salesforce where you work, it, in it, you know, you work every day, who's engaged with you in the past and who is, is probably a hotter, warmer lead to engage more. So what we're going to show you in just a little bit is what this workflow looks like. But what this did for Tom over at Charia was it just eliminated all the manual work that his sales team was doing trying to figure out who was the hot leads. It brought them right into their CRM and in real time, no lag time. So that way the signals from which leads are hot show up right in the sales rep's uh, workspace. And then he's got a platform to handle complex integrations. There's no dead ends. He actually tried to do this with a, with a different tool. And after about 20 hours, he gave up because he realized that the other tool wasn't robust enough to do the integration that he needed. And he came over to Trey and was able to get it done. So um, that's the preamble. And then let's get to the main event, and that would be what does this look like within Trey, how do you integrate Intercom? Cool. Um, so one of the cool things about this is um, Tom is, was able to build this on Trey. Um, and however, he wasn't able to build it on another platform because it wasn't kind of robust and complex enough. Um, he, we were able to use one of our pre-built pre templates as kind of a framework to get him started. Um, and I'm about to show you that template library. So our templates really aren't uh, a big selling point since we're, we do a lot of custom work and we're often used to solve um, items that can't be solved with other types of software simple, simply because we're very flexible. So templates are mainly used to be kind of building tools and show you where a good place is to start off when constructing a new workflow. They're also really good for onboarding and kind of figuring out how the platform works. So for this example, we're connecting Intercom um, and Salesforce. So if we just click on Intercom in our template library, we'll see um, a bunch of kind of pre-built Intercom templates that do really the base movement. So whether you want to move all of your leads from Intercom into Salesforce as soon as the data is updated or other type of um, base movements, we give you a good framework to start. <coughs> um, so for this example, um, we could do something like um, enrich Salesforce contacts with Intercom data when the contacts are saved. So we can just go ahead and um, go into this template. It kind of gives you a little bit of information about how the data is going to move starting off. And then we can just install the template into our account with one click. And then once the template is installed, um, we can just walk through a few configuration steps. Essentially all it involves is authenticating in your Salesforce account. Um, all we have to do for that is add a new authentication. We can pick exactly which parts of our Salesforce we want to allow. This is, um, this is part of our security. So we want to make sure that you're comfortable with exactly the type the parts of your account that Trey is accessing. Um, and then we present you with kind of the standard Salesforce login screen. So you can just type in your normal username and password and there's no kind of finding odd keys and things like that. So it's very simple. Um, you can even use you know, your custom domain login to log into your sandbox. So I'm going to exit out of this because I already have a Salesforce login. Um, and then we would do the exact same thing with Intercom. 
And then after that, this is ready to go. And this kind of gets you a, a basic um, structure of how the workflow works. We're essentially you know, listening for a context change, um, doing a bit of custom mapping, um, pulling back the contact from Salesforce and some other some fields that we want to move into Intercom. Um, and then we're using that data to map into Intercom. So this is a pretty, this is a pretty straightforward flow. Um, we're essentially just kind of going through all of our contacts in Salesforce and waiting for them to change, um, grabbing them from <laughs> grabbing uh, some data elements from Salesforce to say, hey, I want to I want to pull back this contact's email address. I want to find the associated user in Intercom using their email address. Um, and then I want to do a little bit of custom formatting and then make sure that both item, both um, elements are in sync. So, you know, if, if you wanted to change this to comp from contacts to maybe leads, all we have to do is change the Salesforce dropdown to maybe, um, let's see, I gotta update my Salesforce all if I have a lot of Salesforce authentications. Um, so we would maybe have to just change this to lead, right? And that's accessible from this drop-down menu. These menus, um, when we're when we're doing a query, um, we're we're automatically pinging your individual instance of Salesforce and saying, find records um, of any record type that you have in your account. So if you have custom record types, such as you know specific types of contracts or anything like that, we pull your specific Salesforce instance and we can access all of them from this drop-down menu. Also, if you have custom fields associated with your record types, we automatically query your instance and we can access all custom fields such as these are some that we have, so age, MQL, SAL. Um, we can access these fields in both your production and sandbox instances. So if you want to build out this test flow, um, make sure it works correctly and just run it in your sandbox for a week you can make this authentication your sandbox account. Then you would just pit pull record types um, from your sandbox, run it. Once you decide it works, all you have to do is switch it over and run it in production. So it's very quick and easy to do that. Um, and then you can be sure that all data that's being changed um, in production has already been fully unit tested. So you'll be you know, confident there. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Wow. So leads from web chat in your CRM, the hot leads, right? So this is, uh, this is really going to save sales reps and SDRs lots of time. No more manual stuff. Uh, more time to sell. So thank you for that. Let's pop into our third of four uh, use cases here. And so we're walking you through this like typical process. So you get your leads in your Salesforce account, and then what? What are you supposed to do with those things? Um, I want to share with you what AdRoll is doing. And of course, AdRoll is uh, one of the largest retargeting and advertising networks out there. And we had the chance and the fortune to work with Brendan Ritz over there, marketing ops lead. He really, I mean, I, yeah, his son might be marketing ops, but he works really closely supporting the sales organization, really aligned there. And they have a pretty big CRM database with 650,000 global opportunities within it. And what they're doing is they are using other tools. Um, these are the website profiler tools like uh, Built With, which tell you which technologies are integrated into the website of any company. They're using data enrichment tools like uh, Clearbit again. And what they're doing is they're taking those opportunities and they're enriching it with data that helps them pinpoint the best opportunities to go after. And by doing so, AdRoll was able to increase their sales team appointments by 13%. And um, that is actually a material impact on the bottom line for them. Um, so what, what Brandon would tell you is that he ultimately needed a very powerful and flexible tool because the way that they have customized Salesforce within AdRoll is unique. And that's true. I mean, I used to work at Salesforce. The great thing about Salesforce is you can customize it to your heart's content. But unfortunately what that means is it makes it very hard to integrate with a kind of a less flexible tool. And so with the flexibility of Trey, they could move data to exactly the right fields or the right custom fields exactly the right time and get them routed and presented in front of the sales organization who could then pounce on 
the promising lead. So let's hand it back to Mr. Andrew Wiseman to see what this looks like within Trey. Cool. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you all how to kind of build, build out a very um, basic version of this. Um, I'm going to build out a small flow that's capable of processing um, millions of records. And as you can imagine, AdRoll as a great company is having has millions of records that they need to process monthly. Um, one of the key things about Trey is there's really no limit to the size of data that we can process. So even though you might see a workflow that only has five or six simple steps, um, it's very easy to pass millions, hundreds of millions of records through that flow and do it extremely fast. So just going to our dashboard, um, I'm going to create a new workflow. <clears throat> I'm going to call this um, um, SFDC, Salesforce.com, to clear bit enrichment. So we're just going to set this up so that it happens once a week. Um, we're going to enrich all of our records on Saturday when no one's at work. So you know, it, depending on how you use your enrichment, you might use it for some type of assignment rule. So if you find that a client or that, a, that an account or a lead matches certain criteria, um, such as activity or something like that, you might want to assign them to a different team or have a different account owner, and you might not want that assignment happening midweek. So this is a good example of where Trey can be used um, to kind of uh, as an ETL item kind of tool um, and do a bulk enrichment once a week to all of your records. So we're going to pick our scheduled trigger. Um, we're going to say we want to run this every day. Um, but only on Saturday. So we're going to run it on Saturday. Um, we're going to run it at 12 o'clock. Yeah. What we're going to do is grab all of our records out of Salesforce. So we're just going to process all of our um, leads. I'm going to use my Salesforce account 7. Um, we're going to find records of type lead. We're going to pull back their email address because that is the um, field that we're going to send to Clearbit. We're also going to pull back the lead ID because that is how we reference the lead later. So once we've grabbed information about our lead, we update that lead using the lead ID as a reference point. So let's change this to say um, every Saturday at 12 p.m. get all leads. <clears throat> We're going to drag in a loop here. So we want to loop through every single one of these leads. This pulls back a giant list of leads, um, however many are in your Salesforce account. And what we're going to do is process each lead individually. So we'll call this loop leads. We're going to pass in the entire list that's um, return in the Salesforce call by dragging this over and saying, I want to process all of our leads. So the first step is let's do a little bit of uh, data cleansing. So let's make sure that each of these leads has a real email address. Depending on your Salesforce instance, you might be taking in leads from all types of sources and you don't want to use up clear bit calls um, for leads that are have bad data because that doesn't really make any sense. And maybe as part of this cleaning, you want to delete any leads that have an improper email address. So let's just say, is this an email address? Um, we'll pass in the email address from the current iteration of the loop. We'll name this step validate email. Um, this is just our basic kind of text email check. You could also use something like, um, like Bright Verify um, if you wanted to send it through an actual domain check and Bright Verify is essentially a service that will ping the email address and make sure that it's getting the appropriate response. Um, this essentially is just a check to make sure that the format's correct. So if someone's sending you a random text string from an entry in a form, um, it's just kind of an obvious step where you don't want that. So now we'll use a Boolean condition. This essentially says, does the condition above meet a yes or no check? Um, so is the email valid? This returns true or false. So the Boolean condition will say, um, is valid. Let's actually say email valid for readability. So we'll say is the result of this call equal to 
true. If it is, let's do a call to clear bit. Now we want to go ahead and enrich that email. So I'm going to use my clear bit authentication. I'm going to enrich person and company by email address. I'll pass the email address in from this loop. So we'll say enrich. Then I'm going to update that Salesforce lead that we're currently processing. So I'm going to use update a record. The record type is going to be lead because that's what we're processing right now. And then the record ID will come from this get lead this um, loop. And that's why we pull back the lead ID before so that we can reference it in the up step, update step later. And then the record fields are totally up to you. So this, this queries your Salesforce account again. And let's say we want to just update the number of employees. We can choose any data that comes out from this clearbit call. So we'll just choose employees here. Um, it's, it's extremely easy, depending on your use case, to add as many fields as you need and just map in every single value from this clear bit call. There's so many types of data you can bring back. I'm just going to do the number of employees for now. So update record, update lead. And then the other logical path is maybe the email isn't valid and you want to just remove the lead from your system. So we can do a Salesforce call. Let's say call it delete lead. We're going to delete a record of type lead, and the record ID is going to be this lead ID that we're currently processing. And with that many steps, every week you can take every single lead in your Salesforce or only leads that are new, process every single one, make sure the email is valid. If it's not, we can just remove it because there's no use emailing someone who technically doesn't exist. Um, or if it is valid, we can do a clear bit enrichment call and update a ton of data about that lead that you might need for reporting or assignment purposes and anything else like that. Great. Thanks, Andrew. So to sum up what I saw, this is, I mean, quoting Admiral, increasing sales team appointments by 13%. And he did that in maybe five minutes with a drag and drop builder, a couple really smart kind of logic flows in here, and he's done. And so, again, the, the message here is that this is not hard stuff to do anymore. Technology has made this a lot easier, and that we can be a lot smarter in pinpointing the deals that we should be going after. And this is just, it's just a huge efficiency gain for a sales organization to be able to do this. Okay, so let's hit the last and probably one of the most exciting use cases we've seen one of our large enterprise customers uh, throw at us. And um, it's really about custom lead scoring using a lot of different signals. And really, you know, crafting a process that's very custom to the specific situation and customer and using some smart, really some smart ideas. Um, so I think the best situation here is just to let Andrew dive in. He really assisted this customer in setting up um, something different. And I would say that this is, this is really the next phase in technology. There used to be you know, quite a few packaged softwares that do like black box lead scoring. A lot of them have not succeeded because what customers are, are realizing is that they need custom stuff. They need to be able to build and tweak their algorithms and work with their data science teams to you know, build something for their situation. And that's where I think you know, technology is going all this flexibility be really being put into use at companies. So, um, so Andrew, you want to walk us through uh, what uh, this enterprise customer is doing? Sure, yeah. Um, so this is, yeah, one of our enterprise clients. They are processing a, a ton of data and um, essentially applying all of this custom logic to these to data that's coming in from these connected sources. Um, the leads are being scored in real time. And how it's working is <clears throat> for we have four connected data sources. So there's Segment, um, which is connected to a few of their, like their website and is drawing in click events and different things that they're interested in monitoring. Intercom, which is getting user data for how they're interacting directly with the website. Um, and then there's Postgres, which is collecting project usage data um, from, from their backend, such as how much memory they're using, 
um, connected applications and other items that essentially tell sales personnel that are custom to this company um, what might make a lead more likely to convert. Um, and then there's, there's the example at the bottom. So there's a universal connector, right? So if you had any other cloud service that you were using that you thought has data that might be relevant to score a lead, just imagine plugging it into the rest of this algorithm and having that data um, come in in real time um, and affect this algorithm. So what we're doing is we're creating, with data from these disparate sources, we're creating a unified lead record. So every time one of these targeted events, so every time a specific segment track event comes in, such as viewed a specific page or anything like that, or any time an intercom um, user event comes in, such as I came into intercom and I've been inactive for a month, but now I'm active again, um, we automatically trigger this scoring algorithm. So we're listening for all of these, the various attributes that are listed in that, that middle square where the mouse is pointing. Um, in, whenever any of those change, we're automatically sending them all to a custom scoring algorithm. And this is just a step um, where um, the sales, the, the head of the sales is, or I believe it's the head of sales operations, is able to interact directly with these scores that are associated with each attribute. So maybe um, someone from Intercom comes in and they haven't interacted. They signed up more than two weeks ago and they were last seen um, less than three days ago, right? The score is plus 15. But the sales leader is able to easily change that score if they decide down the road, maybe that's not as significant of an event. They can easily change it to 10 and kind of see how the data moves. And one of the cool parts about this is this scoring algorithm is very, um, is, was made in a very collaborative way. So, you know, there was a, a team of um, people who just assessed the data and were able to come out with an initial version of the algorithm. And then the sales team was able to participate um, over a few weeks and kind of give their input, which really helped with adoption for this new algorithm because, you know, it's not always easy to get a team to accept something that's been completely built in a machined way. Um, so we have built a very flexible um, interface for editing that algorithm. And as soon as, so as soon as these events come in, the algorithm is made, and then you see the rescore lead, um, that is algorithm processing, and then that new lead score is immediately put into their CRM of choice. Um, there's further enhancements that can be done to this that other clients have done, such as if the lead score hits a certain level, we can automatically notify the sales representative that owns the lead in your CRM um, via Slack or email or other means. And then we can also do something such as connecting to a click-to-call solution um, and such as with a service like Vonage and saying, um, you know, this is a hot lead, they need to be killed, contacted now. Here's a link to just click to call them that, and that link comes through in Slack. Awesome, wow. So. What he just saw here is basically the kind of the logic that got baked into a custom lead scoring flow that is driving better opportunities into a very large sales organization. And, um, and you know, Andrew here was right alongside helping them uh, to build something that was very powerful for them. So, uh, so whether you want to build this yourself or lean on us, great. But the reality is, you know, we're now in a place with technology getting easier and easier where integration is no longer cloistered off to just IT professionals with dev, you know, dev and coding skills that, you know, sales leaders, sales ops leaders, uh, people in the sales organization, line of business leaders can start automating the processes that they know and understand best. And what this is doing is really empowering uh, those, those people that are responsible for the results to, uh, you know, solve some of their integration pain points and streamline their processes. And, you know, now people can do this themselves. And that's, that's really the, the big picture here at Trey and what we're, we're pursuing and what we're all about. So I want to point the audience to some more resources out there in the world. Um, you can check out our blog. We post weekly a combination of ideas and product enhancements. Uh, you can go check out some of the customer case studies on there. Two-page PDFs, really quick reads, gives you a taste of what people are doing. 
And then, of course, if you want to go deeper and see you know, specifically what Trey can do for you, I suggest scheduling a demo, one-on-one -on -one demo. That way you can see what this could do for your sales organization. So we only have two minutes left, uh, and what I want to do is open up the lines to Q&A, meaning opening up our chat window. So if you have any questions for us, we'd love to hear from you. And again, we'll send you a recording of the webinar. If you have any questions after, head up our website. We've got Intercom. Uh, we're happy to talk with you. So let's see. First question in here is, wow, this looks really great. How, how do I get started? Do you guys offer you know, help and assistance for, your first, for us creating our first workflow? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, we absolutely do. There's, a, there's several types of assistance we offer. Um, we have uh, a managed chat window at the bottom of our site where you can ask, have direct access to our technical team who can help with any type of workflow questions you might have. Um, we also offer um, co-development sessions. So if you want to kind of own this process, we can train you up um, on the software as well as kind of send you relevant documentation links. We have a documentation database. Um, and also, if, if you don't want to, if you don't have time to build this straight up, um, we also offer fully managed solutions. So you can just work with us to create a scoping document, and we ha can have an implementation team um, construct the flow for you. So there's a lot of ways we can explore that. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, next question is about scale. Uh, and the question is, you know, how much data can you process? Is there a, kind of a max in your platform? Yeah, that's all, yeah, also a good question. Um, there is no technical max. We have clients processing um, thousands of records and clients processing billions of records. Um, it's, it's not, our, our architecture allows us to be kind of infinitely scalable. We use a, a serverless architecture, so we essentially spin up um, spin up servers in the cloud as when we get more data throughput. Um, so it, it really kind of, uh, yeah, there's really no, no limitations there. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, I'll have time for one last question. I'll pick this one up. And the question is, how is Trey different from other vendors in the space like Dell Um So I would say I, two things. One is Trey is designed for business professionals so they can integrate. Uh, the reality is IT professionals can also use our tool and they're happy with that. Uh, and, then, and that's a major distinction from what came before Trey. A lot of them were designed and require you know, coding skills. And then um, from other players in the, in the integration space, I'd say you know, we're, we're clearly aimed at mid-market and enterprise companies and providing things like SOC 2 security, all the resilience and scalability, all the permissions, controls, and alerting that an enterprise requires. But the reality is even companies that aren't quite enterprise yet, that are startups, that are growing fast, they're choosing to work with Trey because they don't want to have to swap out their integrations you know, when they get to be a little bit bigger. So uh, we scale up and down to uh, different customer sites. So those are the main two distinctions in the marketplace with Trey. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, really great webinar. Great to see so many people on. If you have any questions, come over to our website, chat, submit a form. Happy to talk to you more. Thank you again.